So it says two people are standing on opposite sides of a Ferris wheel. One looks up to the top of the wheel at an angle of 60 degrees, while the other looks up at 70 degrees. If the two people are 68 feet apart, how tall is the Ferris wheel? Okay, so here is our setup so far. This is the thing that kids struggle with, being able to do the beginning. That's what you've got to be able to draw, some sort of Ferris wheel. You don't have to really draw a Ferris wheel, but some sort of shape. And the two people are on opposite sides, okay? A lot of times people try to put them on the same side. Just read the question. Are they on the same side? Here, are they on opposite sides. They're looking up to the middle, okay? The next thing you have to decide is, do you have a triangle? Can you draw a triangle? Yeah, what are our three things that are going to be our corners? Yeah, mm, yeah, bad question. Here's what I was trying to say. Where to connect the dots? Obviously, between the two people and the top of the Ferris wheel would be the third spot. Yeah, bad question. Good answer. Okay, so from there to there to the top of the Ferris wheel. The third point is the top of the Ferris wheel. Okay, so there is our setup. I don't like how thick that line is. That's weird to me. Okay, there's our triangle. Okay, I don't really care much about like the Ferris wheel, it's kind of getting in the way, but that's our main idea here, okay? Once we've done that, let's start labeling stuff. It says one looks to the top of the wheel at an angle of 60 degrees, okay? So which angle looks 60 and 70, which one looks smaller, the one on the left or the right? The left, I would, I would say that looks more like a 60 degree angle. It doesn't matter which one you do where. I'm just doing it, 60 and 70. So I've got this. They're looking up at that angle. That's how I know it's the bottom ones. And then the other thing it tells you is they are 68 feet apart. Okay, so what's 68 feet? The red line is 68 feet, the bottom. Okay, there's that. What am I trying to find ultimately in this question? Once I've drawn my triangle, in order to solve a triangle, you need three bits of information. Did I get three bits of information? Yep, so I'm almost there. In the end, what am I trying to find here? How tall it is. So which one line do I want, the green or the blue one? The middle. I don't even have what I want yet, okay? So by drawing in another line, you've got to think, darn it. That means I have to do another step. It's not going to be just solve one, because I need to find this one. By drawing the height, what else can I label on this triangle? It's a 90 degree angle. Anytime we talk about height, that is, we're assuming it's a perpendicular angle. It's a 90 degree angle. So there's my picture, and ultimately, I'm trying to find H. I'm trying to find the height of this triangle. Okay? Thoughts. When in doubt, start solving for stuff. Okay? They didn't tell me anything about this triangle yet, so I don't really know. Let's think about the triangle that they just told me so far. What can I find on that triangle? The, uh, the other angle would be great. I've got two angles. Always do that. If you have two angles, find the third one. Do that automatically. Even if you don't need it, do it anyways. So 60 and 70 is 130 minus 180 tells me that this angle is a 50 degree angle. Okay? It's not a right triangle, so I can't do Sokotoa. The next thing I've got to think is can I do law of signs? Caleb, can I do law of signs here? How do you know you can do law of signs? You've got two things across from each other. Caleb said 68 and 50 degrees. I've got this and this. I've got my power couple. I need two things across from each other in order to do it. I've got it right now. I've got those two things. So using those two things, I can solve for anything else on this triangle. Okay? Uh, Amber, what do you want to solve for on this triangle? A, what side do you want to A, blue or green? Green. It doesn't matter. She gets to pick. She says A, so if she's going to solve for A, what other number is she going to use to help her? The 70 degrees, the one opposite of it. Okay? So we've got that. We're going to do law of sines because we had partners. We're going to set that up. Sine of what here? 50. Sine of that angle over its side, its partner, 68, is equal to? the sine of the angle, 70, over its side A. The biggest issue that kids get is they start taking the sine of a side length. You can't do that. Take the sine of an angle. Okay? Let's go ahead and do that. 
first thing I always check every single time you do it. Okay, you might have accidentally hit something wrong in your calculator, or somebody else might have borrowed your calculator. Check to make sure you're in degrees first. Now I'm in degrees. Okay, when I type this in, uh, Kyla, what is this going to look like? What am I going to do to type this in? 68. Good. The two that you know, you're going to multiply together. This is a cross multiply problem. So she took 68 times sine of 70. She gets that. Then what, Eric? Divide by, divide by the one that's by itself. So we're going to divide by sine of 50. I get that answer. Do I need to take inverse sine or anything like that? No, because it's just equal to A. It just says A. It doesn't say sine of A or cosine of A or anything fancy like that. It's just A. That's my answer. A equals 83.4. One. It's a side length, so we go to one decimal, or two decimals, sorry. Okay, cool. We now know what A is. A is 83.41. Yep. Okay, one second. So, once we've done that, great. That didn't solve what we wanted. Again, remember what we wanted. It was this thing right here. I wanted to know the height. My ultimate goal was to find h here. Okay? So now that we've done that outside part, think about where our focus is now. Our focus is on this triangle. In order to solve that triangle, that right triangle, you need to know three bits of information. Okay? Janice, do I know three bit what three bits of information do I know in that triangle? Mhm, mm I know that. 60 degrees, and it's a right triangle. Excellent. Those are the three things. So I can solve it. I know three things. I can solve it. Okay? Ultimately, I'm trying to solve for H. There's multiple ways to do this. What's one way we could do it? Okay? Um, in order to know Pythagorean theorem, and this, we have to know two of three sides. You cannot say that that side is 64. That's illegal. Don't do that. Or 60, yeah. 34, sorry, half of 68. It doesn't say anything about them being equally apart. So that's always the thing that kids try to do. They say, oh, it's 68, so 34 feet and 34 feet. It doesn't say that, okay? So don't do that. That's the biggest mistake we normally make, but good thoughts anyways. What else can we do? So Katoa would be the other way, or you could do law of signs. Technically, if you want to keep doing law of signs, you can do it. You got two things across from each other. You can use it to find your third one, okay? If you want to do that, do that. Let's do Sokotoa just because we need practice with it. So we've got this angle right here. What side do we know in relationship to that angle? The hypotenuse, that 83.41, which is the hypotenuse. And then I'm trying to find H. How is H related to it? Opposite. Okay, so hypotenuse, opposite, Sokotoa. Opposite and hypotenuse sine of my angle equals the opposite H over my hypotenuse 83.41. If you would have done law signs on this problem, same answer. Okay, it's good to know how to do both. So to solve this problem, Darius, what am I going to have to do? 83.41. Yep, just multiply by 83.41 times sine of 60. Get rid of this 83.41 in the bottom. No, oh, that's not what I meant, right? Sorry. About 83.41. Type it in, hit enter. There is the height, 72.23, or 24 feet. 72.24 feet. That is how high the Ferris wheel is. So pretty big Ferris wheel. Kind of makes sense what we did big triangle, find a part of it, then use that to help you find the right triangle part that you wanted. Okay, important problem, make sure you know what you're doing.